That's pretty breathtaking playing. Uh, how do you practice a piece like that? I mean, can you, do you do it slowly or build up to that? I mean, how, does, how do you do it? I don't want to let people in on that. Oh, I see. <laughs> Secret uh, weapons. I will say, however, that it actually gets a lot easier to play after you've played something else. Um, I play it usually as an encore after, you know, Petrushka and Liszt and other things. And, um, and I have recently started saying that now that my body's tenderized, uh -huh. it's time to play another piece. It, it becomes a lot easier because your body is very, very prepared because you've pushed it enough already. Wow. Well, you have pushed it successfully in all kinds of ways. I didn't mention earlier, we first met Conrad on the McGraw-Hill Company's Young Artist Showcase. Matter of fact, it was on our New Year's special because he won the Salon de Virtuosi Award. And somewhere in there, you won the Gilmore Young Artist Award. Now, here you are, Avery Fisher recipient, and um, when are you going to retire? Uh, Never, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. How did you find out about the Fisher Award? Because you didn't try for it or enter it or do anything. It was very uh, unglamorous how I, how I found out, actually. I was just in my dorm room up at Columbia. Um, and my manager, Charles at IMG, Charles Letourneau, was very crafty. And um, under, you know, he set it up under the guise of setting up a conference call. And then at the very last minute, he said that he would have to drop out of this conference call and that it would just have to be me and this other party. And, and that, that would basically be how it shook out. And that is how it played out, really. And, uh, and who was the other party? the committee uh -huh. and um, it was just you know at any other morning and I was waking up it was, I was in my dorm room and uh, it was like the first day of classes in January and it was a nice way to kick off the semester so you didn't mind cutting your first class on that particular day what no. kind of things are you studying there I mean I don't understand how you do all of this you're a composer you're a violinist it says here and you've won prizes as a fiddler. Uh, I heard you complaining before to somebody that the one thing you miss is that you can't play in the orchestra or at the piano. And uh, here you are at Columbia. What are you studying there? I have no clue. I have no idea. It's wonderful, actually. I, I, um, I love being there because I love being a, I'm, I'm a pretty humanities-oriented person, so that school is a wonderful fit for me. And uh, I'm just so fortunate to be there uh, as a pianist, and I'm lucky I get to basically study whatever tickles my fancy, really, and, uh, and that is an incredible opportunity that I know not everyone gets, so I'm very, uh, I feel very fortunate for that. I probably will study something like sociology, you know. That was my Some, major at NYU. Really? Yeah. Okay, then, then I don't have to, then when people, when I say that to people and people ask, what are you going to do with that major? I can tell them I can be Bob Sherman. <laughs> Well, it, it works pretty well because you, you do all kinds of interesting things and then you can put it aside and do what you really want to do. Well, I, I think that what I love about being at school is that it all contributes wonderful things for me as a musician. I mean, I, I, I learn so much by just reading Greek literature and we spend an entire semester reading Greek literature. And, uh, and that sort of knowledge and that sort of education is so valuable and uh, I feel just incredibly lucky to have it. Do you think that playing the violin has helped you as a pianist? Most definitely, and it's also helped me as a composer, of course. And uh, certainly, we're playing what's ostensibly a percussion instrument, a big black wooden box with buttons on it. And it's nice to, having played the violin and having worked so much on understanding string phrasing, it's certainly really, really helpful in terms of applying that same knowledge to the piano. We spend so much time trying to achieve the illusion of legato, for example, on a piano, and it helps to approach it from a more literal perspective. Conrad Tao, how would you like your career to materialize? Where would you like to be in five years? Or doing I, what? Well, first of all, I want to be doing what I'm doing today, which is composing, performing, and continuing to expand my brain space. Uh, and I want to continue loving it as much as I do now, because I think that if it weren't for that, I wouldn't be doing it. And I can't imagine doing it were I not enjoying it so much. And, and I hope that in five years I will have continued in my you know, mission to, I suppose, push classical music a little bit out of its perceived exclusive place on the 21st century cultural spectrum. 
uh, as someone who's unabashedly grown up in the 21st century amidst technology and all these things, I hope to bring the, bring the two together and, and really explore what it means to be a classical musician in 2012 and not just a classical musician, period. Well, you have already explored a great deal, as we've seen, and we wish you great success as you go forward you. in all of these many directions, including readings of Greek philosophy. So. Uh, well, thank you very much. <laughs>